So last night, my husband and I went to a star party that was hosted by a local astronomy society club. And um, it was located at Antelope Island in Utah. It's just west of Salt Lake City. Um, and it's an island out in the Great Salt Lake. They built a causeway out to the island. It's been there for many years. It's a state park. Um, but it is um, pretty close to our home. As the crow flies, it's probably only about 10 miles from our home. But, you know, it took us probably 20 minutes or so to get there through the streets and the traffic and all of that. But um, we, they had been hosting these every month through the whole summer. And we have attempted to go and the skies look perfect until about the time we're ready to get in our car and go out there. And then the clouds roll in and then they have to cancel it. And so this was the last one of the year. And so we were able to go. It was a little chilly, but uh, we went out anyway. It started at 5 p.m. at night when we could image the sun. And we took both of our sea stars out there. We have an S30 and an S50. And we weren't really sure how people would receive them. Um, we had, we're, we just joined the club and we haven't really gotten to know how they feel about things. But when we got there, we were pleasantly surprised to see somebody had a dwarf, a dwarf three. And I guess the manufacturers of the dwarf three had sent the club, the dwarf three to try out with their clubs. So they had received one from the dwarf people. And so they had that set up there. That was the only other smart telescope I saw there that night. So we set up our two. And I, I don't, not sure that people know what the sea stars are. It was kind of interesting. People would come over and, what are you looking at? And I'd show them my phone and they'd say, well, can we look at it through the telescope? It's like, well, this is it. This is what you get. And then I'd have to explain the, the whole situation with the telescope. But it was kind of fun to share the sea star with everybody. Antelope Island State Park is a registered international dark sky park. It was designated by Dark Sky International in the spring of 2017. This certification recognizes the park's exceptional quality of starry nights and its commitment to preserving a dark sky experience to minimizing light pollution. So this island is very, very close to Salt Lake City. There's an airport just barely south of it. Um, it's out in the Great Salt Lake, and and it's close to urban areas. So what makes it unique is the island is, it, uh, it raises up in the middle. So it's like a mountain peak, basically. And so on the west side of this island, the mountain hilliness of the island blocks the light from the city. So of course we're going to get some light from just the ambient light that is in the air, but it really was dark. It was pretty incredible. You could see the Milky Way and it wasn't super, super bright. I'm, I'm guessing it's a Bortle 4. Um, so you could see the Milky Way, but it um, wasn't super brilliant. Like if you went down into the central Utah where Canyonlands are. Um, but it was pretty interesting to see how many people were showing up to the star party. If I had to guess, I'd say in total, we saw about 200 people. It was open to the public. So not everybody that came was associated with the astronomy club. These videos are people setting up their gear. That guy right there is the one that set up the Dwarf 3. This is our little setup. That's the S30. And over on the left-hand side in the shadow is the S50. This was right after the sun was setting. We did have to wait a little bit for it to get dark enough to do the polar aligning, but we were able to do that. Uh, the Astronomy Club has this um, telescope. They call it the Bucket. And so people were setting them up and, and 
people from the community had their camp chairs out there and were waiting for it to get dark enough to see stuff. There were quite a few kids there. People brought their kids to look through the telescopes. Um, there was a big variety of rigs out there. Um, I just was amazed at that nobody really seemed to know what the sea star was. I was kind of surprised. Um, but people were a little bit curious, but I think they didn't know quite whether to approach or not. Um, some of the people set up their gear and were kind of off by themselves. And so I didn't know if you were supposed to approach them or not. But these are the... These are just videos of kind of setting it up. And then as people would come around, people in from the club would answer questions, point out things in the sky. Um, a lot of the rigs were pointing at the comet last night, uh, and we did some of those imaging. Um, I wanted to do some more exciting things. I mean, the comet's exciting, but everybody was doing it. So I was imaging. M16 for quite a while and then I did image the comet too because that's what all the little kids were all excited about. So there's my S30 and there's the S50 all set up ready to go. Um, they do um, discourage white light at these star parties so if you're going to go there and you want to have light to um, help you find your way through the weeds and the hills and the the terrain you need to have a red light and if you flash the white light people would i mean they weren't yelling mad at you but they were just trying to tell you to turn off your white lights um, because it can ruin your eyesight and it it can take your eyes up to 30 minutes to adjust from white light and so if you're going to go to a star party get you a little headlight with the red lights or turn your you can go into the accessibility portion of your phone and turn your screen right or, or sorry turn your screen red um, so that it's only blaring red light and that could help you walking around I was just um, very relieved that we only had to carry a little suitcase and a camp chair out there instead of these 40, 50 plus weighted um, telescope rigs. But this was my M16. I imaged it for probably half hour or so. Um, people thought it was fabulous. They loved the seeing the pillars of creation. And the little kids got were running around, so it was a little tenuous with tripods all over the place. But I didn't hear of any catastrophes with rigs getting tipped over. Uh, but um, I imaged M16 for a good share of the night. Uh, we didn't stay the whole entire time because it got cold. It was it was probably in the low 40s or mid 40s, but it, it felt colder because there was a breeze coming off the lake. And, you know, you're right there on the banks of the lake. And so it was pretty humid. It was pretty cold. So we only stayed probably till 9 p.m. or so. So we stayed about three hours. And then um, I turned my S30 to the comet. The This is the lemon comet, and it was bright. I couldn't see it with my naked eyes, but that's not surprising because my eyes aren't fabulous anymore. But this was what the S30 captured. This is straight out of the sea star. I didn't do any of the start-stop kind of stuff that people are doing to get big long trails because I didn't really feel like I needed to. This is six minutes of exposure. I did use 20 second exposures, but this is six minutes straight out of the sea star. No, no processing after the fact. I did go into the editing tools in the sea star app and added a little bit of color to it just so that it was a little bit more brilliant, but it was brilliant on its own, but I just did add a little bit of that orange color to it. Um, it it already came out a little bit orange. I just made it a little bit brighter. And so it was a fun night. It was a, 
fun experience trying to figure out how to get into the community with the the sea star and i was a little nervous about if they'd kind of give you the side eye frown you know because those hardcore astronomers they're out there and they think this is a toy and it's not valid or whatever i was a little worried we'd get some kickback but we did not uh, people were open and accepting um, they were pretty busy setting up their own rigs so that we didn't get a, a whole lot of time to sit down and chit chat with them. We did talk quite a bit with the guy with the Dwarf 3. Um, I guess it's the club's Dwarf 3, but he was the one operating it. And and he was pretty open about what he was doing and welcoming us to the club and and very accepting. Um so it was a fun experience to go out there. For one, we found some great places we can go and image. Uh, there is a fee to get onto the island, so maybe that's prohibitive. If you wanted to go do this every single night, you maybe wouldn't want to pay that. It was a little bit steep because you're paying to get into the state park, and they have a causeway fee that pays for that causeway they built over to the island. And so it was, I think it was $15 for our a car and so it was a little bit steep not something you'd want to do every single night but if you want had a clear night and you wanted to go out and see the milky way and show your kids that it would be a great opportunity and for 15 bucks to do that once a, a month or something would be probably doable uh, so we had a great time we um, got cold we came home and had some hot chocolate and then set up our sea stars at our house and we're very glad that we were indoors running it instead of outdoors. But um, if you haven't been to a star party, find one in your local area and go. They're fun. Everyone was accepting and answering questions. So it's a good way to get involved in the astronomy clubs of your area. Um, so we highly encourage it. And we had a great time. Um, hope everybody else is having clear skies. And thanks for watching.